Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own hemp plate. The first step is to find some local beeswax. You can do this relatively easy by searching online your county name followed by Beekeepers Association. You should be able to find a website or a list of people that sell honey in your area and some of them will also sell you some beeswax. After that you'll need to find a good quality hemp twine. Now I use one millimeter and you want to find the best hemp twine that you can because you are going to be inhaling this. We got ours from California, uh, and it's naturally grown and organic. The next thing you want to do is figure out a way to melt your beeswax. In the beginning, I was melting it with a Pyrex bowl, a little measuring cup, um, microwaving it a couple minutes at a time until it got hot enough. You don't want to overcook it because it will get darker. Um, be prepared to sacrifice whatever dish you use to beeswax. Please use oven safe uh, because I've had several uh, coffee mugs just kind of shatter in the microwave with beeswax in them and then there's just liquid beeswax all over your microwave. A more permanent solution is a crock pot and you can get one of these for like 15 bucks at Black Friday or like Big Lots or Walmart uh, and then you know just throw in your beeswax. Let it melt down uh, and then whenever it's fully melted down we'll come back and we'll dip these in it. All right, so now that it's fully melted and we can check with a bamboo skewer and just swirl it around, make sure everything's liquid. Uh, I switched it over to low. And now take our ball of hemp twine and just drop it in. You can let it just sink down on its own. I like to hold it down. Uh, basically you wanna keep it submerged until there is no more bubbles left. Uh, meaning that the wax has fully soaked into the hemp twine. Uh, at a certain point, it'll get heavy enough to just sink down on its own. So until then, just keep holding it down. And that's finally filled up enough to stay submerged. So now we just wait until the bubbles stop and uh, we'll pull it out. I've got a piece of parchment paper to set it on. So it seems like he's okay to pull out. Most of the bubbles have stopped. I'm just feeling around trying to find. There we go. Now we're just going to let it drain out a little bit. I'm going to flip it over to the exact opposite side so that all that beeswax that's right here is now going to have to come down through the other side so that it gives it like it spreads out the uh, beeswax a little bit more evenly during the drying process. And it looks like There's no, no more to come out. 
So what I'll do is I'll just set it on the parchment paper. Um, let it sit here for maybe a minute and then I'll flip it over so that it doesn't, uh, all the beeswax doesn't sit on one spot. Uh, just constantly move it. We'll constantly move the beeswax around on the inside. That way you don't get like clumps on like the bottom side of it. And uh, after that, we'll basically put it on a spool device and uh, measure it off in segments. Package it up.